grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. It's Dudes and Beer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 344 of the Dudes and Beer podcast, coming to you from Austin, Texas. Uh, I am out on the road this week, so this is a pre-recorded episode. Remember, I'll be there with you as it gets played out live and everything else to answer questions, all that kind of good stuff. But uh, with my road work, I don't necessarily have the most dependable stuff for... uh, Let's just say like two three-way Skype conversations, things like that in hotel Wi-Fi. So um, now that we are incorporating video, I love the fact that uh, we are still providing the same consistent quality for you guys and the same same stuff. Uh, I'm really excited to have our guest on today. We're going to be talking with Scott Ertz. Uh, he is the host of Plug Hits Live, uh, F5 Refreshing Technology. Um, they do some great, great coverage in the world of technology. We're going to be talking about the recent Twitch hack that happened. Um, man, talk about a tongue twister. I did like until I almost just tripped over it. I didn't even realize how hard Twitch hack is to get out of your head. Um, but we're going to be talking about that, how the actual and we used to stream on Twitch, you know, like we have a Twitch channel for the network, all that kind of stuff. And to know that the source code got out that like it's one thing when things get hacked folks um but we're going to talk about what it means what it means for amazon what it means for all kinds of things uh when the source code for something leaks out Uh, we're going to be getting into that all kinds of other great technology stuff everything else with scott Ertz, the host of plug hits live whenever we come back uh, he was actually one of the moving forces behind the votes that got us to the top uh, to beat out the EU podcast, the uh, Politico EU podcast in the uh, People's Choice Podcast Awards. So thank you for that, Scott. And, um, well, let's go ahead and hit commercials, come back, talk with Scott. So uh, when we get back from this message from Podcast Cadet and True Him Science, we'll be talking with Scott Ertz, host of Plug Hits Live. It's there somewhere, I promise you. I don't know what's wrong with my button. Button, button. Have you considered starting a podcast? Looking for a way to make your business a voice of authority in an industry? Then Podcast Cadet is the solution for you. Whether starting a podcast for yourself, your brand, business, school, church, or just plain fun, Podcast Cadet is here to help you navigate the waters of the podcast industry. Specializing in one-on-one consultation and training with industry professionals in fields ranging from podcast technology and editing to distribution, monetization, and even social media strategies. Podcast Cadet tailors their services to the specific needs of you and your podcast. Do you already have a podcast and trying to find ways to engage and grow your audience? Sign up for your Podcast Cadet audit today and let us help you explore new and exciting ways to leverage your content and elevate your podcast brand to whole new levels. From consultational workshops to affordable podcast production and maintenance packages, Podcast Cadet is your one-stop shop for everything podcast-related on the Internet. Visit podcastcadet.com today to sign up for your consultation or training and use code DUDES20 to save 20% off your entire purchase. That website again is podcastcadet.com. That's right, folks. Stop on by podcastcadet.com today. Check it out. If you already have a podcast, we can still help you out there. I say we because I'm one of the founders of Podcast Cadet. I love this industry so much that I want nothing more than to help people get into it, figure out how to get their passion out there to other people. Because I'm here to tell you, um, if you've got a niche passion, 
somebody else has that with you. Uh, Comic-Cons and cosplay are a prime, prime, prime example of that. Uh, So while you were online checking that out and checking out our guest, Scott Ertz from Plug Hits Live, make sure to stop on by True Him Science. True Him Science is the home right here in Austin, Texas, for some of the best darn CBD product that I have had countrywide. About three years ago, I personally was advised by my doctor to add CBD into my diet, um, be it through edibles, oil, whatever, uh, to help with my travel anxiety. I was traveling about 30, 35 weeks a year, and it just, along with my, she recommended this as a supplemental along with my anxiety meds, because it got to where it was a bit overbearing, and that began my search. I started looking at dispensaries all across the country whenever I went to legal states. Uh, This was before the hemp laws passed that we talked about last week, but um, man, I tell you what, the spigeric process that they use over at True Hemp Science is absolutely amazing. Whole plant extract, they use nothing but true hemp over there. 100% of the plant is used. Seeds, stems, roots, leaves, buds, everything uh, to provide you the best quality CBD possible. TrueHempScience.com is the website. Dudes7 is the code that you want to use to save 7% off your entire cart of $50 or more and get two, count them, two, like hand size edibles. I got big hands and their cookies are like hand size for me. Uh, They're like the size of a milk saucer. So go check it out. You get two free edibles, 25 milligrams each, as well as 7% off your entire cart whenever you visit True Hem Science. Once again, our guest today, folks, is the host of plug hits live scott Ertz, welcome to the show man it's been since uh, like we chat here and there on social media but it's really been since our ces coverage since we've done anything together or collaborated or anything like that and i i greatly thank you for bringing me in on that project that's something that i look forward to every year with my talking sound podcast is going out there with you guys and Getting all kinds of cool coverage of new technology coming out, that kind of stuff. And you guys over at Plug Hits are really on the forefront. Like you were always putting out articles about the latest and greatest in technology and always covering the, what is happening on the verge of technology news over there. So uh, always let, try. Well, it's it's fantastic to to have somebody like you because you really there are a lot of tech writers out there. There are a lot of shows that cover this kind of stuff, but there are, aren't a lot of people who can break it down into everyday knowledge and and concept of use and practicality. So um kudos to you guys over there because you really do make the information that for a lot of people would be Thick, thick, heavy information. Yeah, um, very yeah, acceptable that's and digestible. Always been the goal. You know, when we when we got started, the goal was to uh, to create. A, well, I mean, it, it evolved over the years, but the the goal was to create a brand that allowed for um, us to talk about tech news in such a way that we could talk about what how it affects consumers. If it doesn't affect consumers, we don't talk about it. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's been, that's been our mission at least the last eight or nine of the 14 and a half years we've been doing this, um, has been just to to talk about the news and how it affects you. If it doesn't affect you, we don't spend our time talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, once again, that's what I love about you guys. You make it so accessible and so personable. Uh, and speaking of what affects you, Let's start mm-hmm. cracking this nut, man, because when I saw, number one, when I heard that Twitch was hacked, it was one thing, but the coverage that I saw and that I originally posted, I posted your stuff after to the mm-hmm. Dudes and Beer group, and I always do because I, I love I love how deep you guys get with it, and y- y'all were the place where I first saw that the source code had been compromised and had been released. So yeah. let's let's get into what that means and the implications of that real quick. Source code for a lot of stuff. Um, so so obviously under the Twitch brand, there's a lot of 
there's a lot of sub brands and a lot of pieces of software. And from what we can tell, it's, I guess, take a step back, 125 gigs worth of data, almost exclusively text in one way or another was compromised, was, I apologize, released on 4chan. Um, wow. 125 gigs worth of data. That is a um, massive amount. A massive amount of text, because yeah. you and I can kill 125 gigs doing, you know, oh. a couple of hours of yeah. uh, broadcast, but yeah. 125 gigs of text, essentially, what got out was some uh, financial information, Ooh. Uh, yeah, some personal information, the stream keys uh, for most, if not all, of the stream, uh, the accounts, and most importantly, to, to this particular topic, the source code. And that, it's so unusual that source code gets out. But in this case, it's the, it appears to be the source code for all of Twitch. In that collection included the, the, um, the client, the game manager, um, a couple of behind the scenes products, potentially the website itself, and even possibly the, uh, the stream server. Now, why am I saying possibly when this was a week and a half ago? Because 125 gigs is a ton of data to go through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so even now, we're not entirely sure everything that's in this cache. And this cache may not be the only one. The hacker has said that this is only part of the data in their possession. And so, yeek. Wow. 125 gigs of almost exclusively text is only part of what is in their possession. <sighs> that, and, and that is disturbing because, once again, just for those of you that don't know, like Amazon owns Twitch. Mm -hmm. um, so... And everything lives on AWS. Yeah, yeah. Everything lives on their server. So it's not necessarily um, that your private data from Amazon is absorbed or anything in that, but uh, a, a backdoor into that system could be in there, right? Sure. And so, so Twitch admitted that a misconfigured server was the cause of the trouble um, they, to the best of my knowledge, as of yet, has, have not said how long that hole may have existed. Um, and they also have said that they do not know how much data is out there. Obviously, that's a difficult thing to figure out, right? Yeah. You, because these files are accessed all the time. So it's hard to say, oh, we'll yeah. see here in our server logs, it shows that this data was accessed. Ah, it's 125 gigs in one cache, there's no timestamp that's going to work for that. Yeah. So they don't know what was taken, and they may not be able to figure it out until it's released. And like you said, or or how long that hole has been there and how long right. they've been siphoning that data. Right. How many people may have exploited it? This yeah. may be one only one hacker. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's it, not really. To be fair, it's not really a hacker if Twitch left the door open and somebody walks in. But <laughs> it's not. It's certainly not a high quality hacker. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know, and that's just it. Like, there's there's a difference between somebody that is black hat going in trying to do stuff. Somebody who's just cruising around and checking out code because they're that kind of nerd. And, hey, they could have seen the back door. Uh, like you said, that yeah. doesn't mean that they hacked it. It was there. Right. The whole, the, right. it, it it's was... like finding a, a hole in a barbed wire fence. The cows might eventually find it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> if you leave your front door open and then you come home to find that your TV is missing, that, yeah. it's yeah. a little on you, too. Yeah. It's a lot on you. It's a little on the person who took it because you kind of left a light on saying, hey, come on in and take it. Well, and, so. <laughs> and granted, there's, there's, what are the numbers on Twitch now? Now, granted, most streaming services, you will never, ever get true numbers. You know, it's like, it's like asking Netflix to say, so how many people are watching this show? They aren't going to give you the 108 million for Squid Game. Yeah. 
Wow. They've been very open about that one. Well, they kind of had to be when they crashed a when they crashed a place's ISP. Yeah. Like they they crashed an entire area of South Korea's internet service provider folks yeah. from the amount of traffic. Yeah. And my wife was like, "Oh my god, I can't believe they weren't more robust with their with their system." And I was like, "I can't believe that Netflix wasn't more open." With the fact that they were going to be adding that to their yeah. to their promotion stuff and saying, get ready for this kind of traffic. I don't and, think promotions were the problem there. I think this went viral on them because yeah. I never saw a promotion. Oh. I never saw a promotion for it. Well, I mean, it was just one of those shows that whenever you pop up, it's like Netflix recommends this, you know? It never it never did that to me. Oh, wow. Wow. I only found and, out about it because it got popular. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's but, interesting to see those issues and to see that possibility there. Um, but I think what's but on the on the Twitch topic, yeah. you you asked, you know, what's their viewership? Now, yes, we don't exactly have a number, um, but the numbers that are out there that float around are fairly reliable. Twitch doesn't have to release numbers; they have a yeah. very robust API, um, and if we wanted to, we could go aggregate those numbers ourselves. And hmm. now that we have the list of basically every active, actively paid streamer on the platform, it's even easier to get an idea <laughs> of true of how many people are watching because you could go get aggregate numbers from the top 100. Yeah. And pretty much be good because anybody outside the top 100, I mean – statistically doesn't matter now i'm not saying that their streams don't matter yes. and or anything like that but statistically the top 100 when you look at how much money each of them made and yeah. how quickly the 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 cliff falls mm -hmm. uh, you can you can basically assume yeah. that the top 100 are a good enough measure um but i mean that that's one of the pieces of information that came out in this right is all of the payees of Twitch and how much they made from August yes. 2019 through October 2021. Um, and, you know, you hear about numbers all the time. So-and-so, you know, Ninja's the top the top paid game streamer. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. Um, I can tell you that from Twitch's perspective, he's not. The top game streamer, and I'm, I don't give names um, on here. The, the information is available, but I'm not the one that's going to release these numbers. The top game streamer uh, from from Am Amazon, from Twitch, brought in nine point six million dollars wow. over those over those what uh, twenty five months. Wow. Um, right. Wow. And, but but the thing is, the cliff is a steep one. So it goes from 9.6 to 8.5 to 5.8 to 5.2 to 5 to 3.2 uh, to 3.2 to 3, 3, 2.9, 2.8, 2.8. And by the time you get to just number 100, think of how many thousands of streamers there are. Yeah. You said you do or did stream to Twitch. We do. And we're statistically insignificant. Number one hundred drops to eight hundred and eighty-seven thousand. Wow! It wow. is such a steep cliff. That is that is a, a chasm of a cliff. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah, a difference in numbers. And yeah, it's pretty crazy. But and Ninja Ninja from Amazon is position forty-six. I'm not going to say yeah. his his take home, but it is significantly less than the people in the top 10. <laughs> well, and, um, and the thing that you have to consider, though, is the number of people, like even myself, even you, like you said, your numbers are not not incredibly significant compared to other platforms for you. But that doesn't mean that your private information isn't on there, that your payment information isn't on there. Sure. You know, that, uh, that it isn't tied to your PayPal that could be hacked yeah. and for, from yeah. PayPal leads to your bank account. You know, for us, um, the good news is that our affiliate um, or partner, whichever one it is, um, program 
literally only went into effect about three days before they acknowledged this. Wow. So it's it's possible that we're not in there at all. Yeah. <laughs> we may have been too early to even make the list, which would be great. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. So what we know is in here is how much everybody was paid. But I've been through the onboarding process for the affiliate program. I know how much information I had to give. Yeah. Now, in our case, it's corporate information, which is all publicly available. But if you were signing up as a person, if you're Ninja, well, Ninja is a bad example. We know he runs through a company. Um, but, you know, if you were to say, um, let's say you're, you're Swag and you're doing it all personally. I have no idea if Swag is doing it personally. It's just an example. Um, if, if the money is coming to you as a person, as opposed to being smart and having uh, a corporate tax shelter around you, um, then what Twitch has is a tax document with your name, address, social, yep. all of that information. And it's possible that that was all in this same server bundle. And so it's possible that this information is out there for people who are not uh, set up through corporations, I would hope that the top 100 are, but I guess the bottom 1,000 aren't. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like asking how many podcasters out there have actively gone out and secured their domain. Mm -hmm. um, that is the great minority out of the 2 million, pod, at almost 2 million podcasts out there. You know, mm -hmm. um, that's the great minority of us that, have our own domain name outside of uh, outside of over the service domains. that you're using. So, uh, and uh, that's uh, that's something that I've been actively wanting to do an episode even on is the the privacy concerns with podcasting. Like, uh, unfortunately, we are so ready to just click accept and move on to the media. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah, know, it's, 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 true. it's literally that cooling response of dopamine in your brain. You know, it's like, right. don't let and the cortisol imagine, in. Please me. Um, I imagine for a lot of <laughs> Twitch streamers, especially when they're early on and just getting invited into the affiliate of the partner program, they're not making great decisions. They haven't thought through, you know, mm. the information that they're giving to, tw to Twitch, which is Amazon, yeah. like their social, that, that information should be private you shouldn't be giving that you should wrap yourself in a corporate tax shelter at the very least yes. for tax reasons but also to protect your social so you give an ein yeah. you can't hack an ein it's public yeah so so you know that's that's not as big of a concern but if your social security number gets out there yeek and the problem is yes 125 yeah. gig is a lot of information we don't know if the claim is accurate, that there's more information. Yeah. That this is only one of several caches. Yep. Yeah. And uh, that that's really the concerning part is how deep does it go? Uh, this is, mm -hmm. I mean, even the recent Facebook outage, that kind of stuff that happened, which was just coinky dink as to its timing. Um <laughs> <laughs> with with a lot of people screaming scrub job, you know, uh, like were they changing their algorithm because of what the whistleblower was coming out with? Who knows? But it, it's so easy for and, and definitely with the code that was popping up, uh, it was either a DNS, uh, like a, D, a DDoS or something that happened or uh -huh. somebody just straight rerouted the DNS server accidentally. Um, on Facebook, yeah, they also and, claimed in all of their press. The server misconfiguration. Yeah, yeah, and uh, which seems like the default. We screwed something up bigger, or there's something we don't want to tell you, so we're going to say yeah. it was a server misconfiguration. Yeah, that seems to be the go-to answer these days. Well, I, I don't, I don't like these canned responses. Like anytime somebody says in an abundance of caution, mm -mm, we're yeah. not going to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> And you really do have to you do have to look out for that kind of lingo, though, because it kind of it's indicative of mm -hmm. things that are going on, you know, and yeah. whenever whenever you see the like, yeah, there's a server outage. Um, OK, well, isn't that like exactly what you do? 
Right. You know, how how come it's working perfectly fine and then suddenly everything's down? Um, right. And uh, which, hey, happens, you know, and yes, people fumble fingers, stuff like that. But remember, oh, folks, as opposed to your normal even business website that most people are running for home businesses and things, stuff like Facebook has they're they're more like NASA. They got like quadruple quintuple redundancy on things. Right. You know, and I've claimed for years there's only 100 people on the planet who. Uh, know Linux well enough to secure a server, and they all work either at Facebook or at GoDaddy. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and yet here we are. Yeah. yeah. My my suspicions on the the Facebook thing are different, but okay. Well, what are they? Go ahead. I I think it was purposeful um, because I think that the that the whistleblower is a. Uh, um, a plant? It was a plant because there was no new information that was presented. Um, but the information that was presented was good to rile people up. Sure. For anybody who hadn't heard it. I mean, anybody who lives in the space knew everything she said before. There wasn't any new information there. Yeah. Yet people got riled up about it, which suggests that it might be a plant because we know Facebook has said on more than one occasion – Regulate us. Yeah. And yeah. they won't because they Facebook wants the cover of the government to be able to say, oh, no, 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 we were told we had to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even, in, even more interesting in that case, Scott, would be the fact of fully knowing the way that, and as the whistleblower said, it's stuff that... Um, people have been saying for years and years that it's it's used to divide us so that it can get more information and make more money um mm -hmm. and it's interesting to see like you said that intended confirmation come out yeah that's that's been my suspicion right from the get-go it, it, I've, it I've, certainly seems I've heard that other way people make, make similar make similar guesses so yeah and uh, Hey, you know, I'll, I'll keep using Facebook uh, mainly because it's it's a great way to connect with the community if you curate the community, you know. Yeah, um, I use it exclusively for business stuff at this point. Yeah, yeah, precisely. All social media, in fact. Yeah, and even if you look at my personal timeline, there's there's not a whole lot there. Um, yeah. It's pretty much podcast episodes. It's it's my show. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I understand. Me too. <laughs> and, you know, even even the fact of my son, I post pictures of my son. But if you go through and look at him, you will never ever. I have never once posted my son's name on social media. Uh, I refuse to. It's bad enough that I'm posting his biometric information. The the last thing that I need to be doing is tying his name to it. Right. Yeah, I know. I have a lot of friends in that way. <laughs> and uh, that's that's a question that we used to talk about with Arshon McCleskey regularly, uh, former Secret Service agent, was how long will it be? My wife says all the time that our basically our children will be the ones to recoil from all of this technology. Uh, they already are. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Zoomers are way less interested in social media. They're turning out to be massively conservative um, compared to compared to the uh, millennials. Um, they're they're going a very different direction. Well, and let's explore that real quick because I think it's important to realize that, a the way that technology actively steers our society like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, things like social media have done have done a lot of damage. Obviously, I, I don't think there's anybody who could argue that that no. social media has been damaging. It's it's what the quote unquote whistleblower exposed about Facebook, yeah. and Facebook is you know not not unique here, right? You know what Instagram does is no no special feat compared with. Snapchat or TikTok or whatever stupid thing comes next. Um, so I think we all know that it's damaging. Um, and 
it seems like, you know, it seems like this next generation is, is really like pushing away from everything that we thought yeah. <laughs> would be their future. They're like, yeah, we're not interested in any of this. So we're going to sit over here. Y'all do whatever stupid thing you want. And we're going to figure out our own thing over here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, the, it's the reason why you don't see teens basically on Facebook at all. They're mostly over on, on TikTok. They, and they've even pushed away from Instagram at this point. The Zoomers are, are generally not interested in traditional social media. They're mostly interested in, in media. Yeah. Um, which is why TikTok has gotten so big. Obviously TikTok has its own, um, uh, communist problems but <laughs> yes yeah i mean we had, we had and it's interesting because yeah we had congressional hearings about that mm -hmm. you know yeah. um and still there still that's, going on um once again i don't think be the next that's gonna ahead. be the next like cultural battlefront is going to be the mm. u.s versus china Without question. Oh yeah. Um, I think I think TikTok's going to have a huge part in it. I obviously I think their inevitable attempted takeover of Taiwan is going to be the thing that actually does it. But um, I think I think that's going to be the next cultural battleground, and TikTok's going to get caught up in it. Uh, it's why Microsoft wanted to buy it at one point. It's because they knew that it was going to get caught up in it. They wanted to have control over it before it happened. Yeah. Well, and. It's it's wild to see the way the a technology shapes culture, but also the way that the culture inner uh, goes against the technology in so many ways. Like right now, over sure. in China, they've got the huge AI network of millions of cameras and things like that, and uh, and yet and yet teenagers can only play one hour of video games a day. Yeah, but all, and only on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Exactly, and uh, they're living. They're living in an AI-powered video game, but they're only allowed to participate one hour a day, three days a week. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, and the the cultural divide when it comes to technology is just mind-numbing. Uh, the way that mm -hmm. we assimilate technology, the way that we use and utilize technology, um, and the importance that we place on it. Because, like you said, despite the fact that they are surrounded by it, make most of it, everything else, um, their culture in and of itself is not steeped in it. Right. Like we are. Um, right. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's partially economic. but Well, sure. But also partially cultural, where they're just not interested in it because they see where it can lead. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've lived the damaging part of it. And they're trying to avoid it. Yeah. What do you see coming down the line with things like the Twitch hack, stuff like that? How do you how do you think they're going to be dealing with the repercussions of this and sewing up the hole, so to speak? So they claim that the hole is, is solved. Um, but we, again, we don't know what else is out there. This could be just the beginning or they could be lying. Right. We, we don't know anything about the, the hacker, obviously, because they're not stupid. Um, but we also don't know, you know what else might be on the horizon. For all we know, there are terabytes more information. There could be bank information, which Twitch has for its affiliates and its partners. Sure. Um, there, there could be you know, all of your uh, payment information. We haven't seen personal information. We've only seen... A dollar amount per streamer. Now, granted, by month, we've the roll-ups are what we see generally in the in the wild. But it's it's basically been a monthly. Here's how much we paid each streamer. But somewhere there's a connection between those two data points, right? Who is yeah. the streamer? So do they have that? I don't know. If they do, do they also have the tax documents, which means that they've got social security numbers? If you set up your account wrong, um, you know, things like that. It's there's no telling what is next here. And that's the thing that worries me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the worrisome things, I just highlighted 4chan in that article. And yeah, um, that was where the data was released. To, 
Well, <laughs> technically, the data was released via a torrent because 125 gigs is a ridiculous amount yeah, of information. Yeah. It was technically released via torrent, um, but the announcement uh, of its existence. The torrent was posted, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. The announcement of its of its existence, like, hey, check this out. And for those of you that don't know, 4chan is kind of like a a Reddit. It's kind of like an old school discussion board type situation. Um, is that me or you? That was me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but it, to it, let's get into 4chan real quick because I don't think a lot of people who listen to the show are, I know some are Reddit users, but um, 4chan has been the source of a lot of controversy over the last few years. Yes. It was really one of the first sources of QAnon, um, which if you haven't seen the HBO documentary Down the Rabbit Hole, wow. Um, go watch that. QAnon is, QAnon is the least of 4chan's problems. Oh, uh, yeah. What, what is our show rated here? I'm sorry? What is our show rated here? Oh, it's adult. Okay, fantastic. So 4chan is the butthole of the internet. <laughs> 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 Without question, yeah, it is where all of the worst crap comes from. Yeah, um, yeah, nothing, nothing. I mean, and granted, no topic is verboten on dudes and beer because, hey, yeah, that's what the conversation is about. However, right. that doesn't mean that we're gonna like sit back and have like people have an anti-Semitic rants on our show, um, or oh, or foster sure. racism. Or foster violence, or rape porn, or things like yeah. that. Um, 4chan, 4chan does. I mean, all of those things. Yeah, yeah. You can. Yeah. I mean, it goes as far as like, is that an actual snuff film, or or did they fake that? Like some yeah, of the so stuff on the 4chan about, is like, wow. The thing about 4chan is that it's generally misunderstood. So 4chan started basically as a joke board where the topics that happened were were comedic they weren't intended to be taken seriously um and then more people started to get on the internet and they didn't understand that they didn't understand that the things that were happening there weren't real um yeah it was like watching 4chan was basically the internet's sitcom. Nothing that happened there was real, and none of it was believable. But then general people got on the internet, and they didn't understand, because you can tell people, hey, iOS 15 allows you to charge your iPhone in the microwave, and people will put it in the microwave. So, you know, it's not always the best of the best. That are, that are reading things. And so 4chan got confused. So now it's kind of fractured. There are the original 4chan users who know that the, that the place is for uh, screwing around. Yeah. And then there are people who don't understand that and use it to legitimately post racist and, you know, crazy things. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's a weird middle ground that that we don't know how to deal with anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, of course, like, the thing that we hear all the time is First Amendment, First Amendment, First Amendment, Scott. And, you know, yes and no, folks. With that First Amendment comes accountability, comes responsibility for your responsibility. actions. Responsibility. You know, um, and when the actions of something on your bulletin board or BBS system, as it used to be called, um, lead to actions in the real world taken against people, uh, you got a problem. You got a problem in front of you. And yeah, even, sure. even Facebook, even even the indomitable Facebook. Hey, you remember the the when live streams started like there were there were live streams of people being kidnapped. Yeah, murders. Murders, uh, rapes. There have been several there have been several murders that were live streamed to Facebook. Yeah. And and yet still the platform's there. Yet still it's um even even Craigslist. Ah, uh, sec 
Ah, uh, Section 230. <laughs> even even Craigslist. You know, there was the Craigslist killer uh, that took down the personals area of Craigslist yep. eventually. Um, but Craigslist is the, still there. There was the hiccup girl that killed the guy in the drug deal. Yep. Which is the weirdest sentence I think I've ever said on a show. <laughs> My, and yet, I bet everybody listening went, oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And it's a weird collection of words. Yes. And it, even... And sh- they, even met, they met via Craigslist. Yep. And even weirder than that was the two girls that took their friend out to murder them in a sacrifice to Slenderman. They just yeah. got out of jail. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's how long ago Justin- that happened. Just in time for the video game to come out, I think, on Tuesday. Oh, there's a Slender Man video game coming out? Yeah, I think it's just called Slender. Interesting. I got a, I got a review offer for it, and I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> well, Nothing that, good. That Nothing was... good has come of Slender Man. No. I'm not interested in a video game no. based and... on that franchise. Thank you. Well, and and that's just it. That That is a prime example of how technology led to an incredible r- cultural rabbit hole. Um, and into a whole yeah, subculture. Sure. Like, there's a whole subculture of people who believe Slender Man exists. Uh, and, and I mean, granted, it got its start on Creepy Pasta, which was kind of a, I guess it was almost like a 4chan of horror, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. And, and that's the problem with the general public having access to the internet. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I remember in the I remember in the early two thousands thinking, <laughs> "Oh, this is not good. Everybody <laughs> should not have access to this because yeah. there's a culture yeah. that's built here that the general public is not going to understand." Yes, yes, and there's there you and know, they don't. well, and there's things that you have to be wary of. There's things that you have to look out for. Back in the day, it was always the joke of, "You sure that's a girl you're talking to in that chat room?" Um, and that was back in the well, days of AOL and dial-up and things like that, you know. You're not on um, YouTube, right? Excuse me? You're not on YouTube, right? Uh, like, watching it? Um, no, this this show. Is this show on YouTube? Yes. Yes. Okay, then we I do won't distribute. say the thing I was going to say. Okay. Okay. Um, You'll get a hard strike like somebody else did this week. Oh. I was going to make a joke. I was gonna make a joke. Oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna make that joke. Well, don't don't make a joke that'll get us a hard strike. But I will say yeah. that we actively got a hard strike um, in return, uh, a volley back from from a certain media individual because of an episode a couple episodes ago. Um, oh, we, we'll have to talk about that off the air. Yeah, it was it was interesting, folks, to see the volley that came back toward me because of an episode. Um, and we'll, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, it the the culture and subculture of the internet has gone absolutely bonkers over the especially over the last two years, man. Um, I appreciate you using my word there. <laughs> well, it's just insane. It's insanity. You know, uh, people. People. I I say wild, outlandish things to my wife all the time whenever she asks questions, uh, and she'll be like. Wow, really? And I'll be like, no, no. But doesn't it no. sound like that could be the truth? Like, that's how easy it is, you know. Uh, not that she's yeah. that easily fooled, but you can you can make you just, two or three things weave together so entirely easily. Yeah. Um, you just have to say something stupid with confidence. It takes the right very amount little, of confidence. Yeah. Yeah, is yeah. enough to get the job done. Absolutely. And it takes very little trimming on the piece to make it fit into the puzzle. Right, it's true. <laughs> you just gotta f- selectively figure out where to trim. Um, so, or just wet the piece and bend it, and you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. You could do. You could totally. You could totally go squid game and just lick it until, <laughs> I, <laughs> until you have, can trace I have not it out. Seen it, so I, I have not seen it, so I cannot give my feedback on that joke. Uh, it does not look interesting, even a little bit. Um, it was anyway, a- uh, slender. Slender came out on uh, this Tuesday. Okay, okay. Um, it's, it's out now for iOS and Android. Oh Not wow! This is an ad or anything, but yeah, 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 it's out there. It's called Slender: The Arrival. Huh. Interesting. 
Interesting. Um, if anything, I may have to may have to look up the trailer or something to see what it's all about. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a horrifying I'll experience. You, I'll send you a YouTube link. Okay. They send it as part of their press well, release. Scott, I know we only have you for a little bit longer, man, like another 10 minutes. Uh, let's let's kind of wrap this up sure. and tie a bow on it here. And the the impacts of the Twitch leak, the the recent whistleblower things coming from 4chan all the time, um, stuff like that. What are what are we looking at on the horizon as far as new tech coming out to either combat this kind of stuff or well i th- i think we're going to see more ai start taking over uh doing certain things but i think mm-hmm. before that what we're going to see is we're going to see section 230 gutted um because i think at this point it has to um it's poorly worded which has caused problems i think the fundamental concept behind it was sound. I think the implementation yeah. is poor. I think the wording is poor um, because it doesn't actively define what a platform versus a publisher are. Um, and without yeah. those definitions, it's open to interpretation. And so, you know, they get to say, no, 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 we're a platform. Yeah, but you're moderating content, which makes you a, makes you a publisher. Oh, but it doesn't say that. Mm. Yeah. So I think 230 is going to either have to get gutted or rewritten. Um, and I think that's coming quicker than not um, because it's the one thing that I think both the left and the right can agree on Yeah, is that is that the Internet sucks. There are huge problems. Now, the left and the right see different problems, right? The, sure. The the left wants to curtail more and the right wants to be able to speak. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, the, 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 what they see is very different, but they both see 230 as, as the, uh, the limiting factor. Mm. So I think 230 is about to get an overhaul is my guess. Um, and then once 230 is overhauled, depending on what it looks like when it's done, <laughs> yep. which will – uh, probably depend on whether or not it happens before or after the midterms. Um, you know, yeah. either 230 is get stronger, which will happen after the midterms, or it's going to get looser, which would happen before. Um, we'll either see more AI get involved or we'll see the platforms back up. And so there's mm-hmm. no real telling which direction we're going to go. Everybody, you know, one of my one of my favorite hosts – was asked this week, are you an optimist or a pessimist? And he said, uh, I'm a conservative optimist. A conservative pessimist says that uh, it couldn't possibly get worse. And a conservative optimist says, of course it can. <laughs> what? Hold my beer. <laughs> so, so I think I think where we are right now is, and I think everybody agrees with this, um, I think it, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Um, I think all of the problems are going to magnify over the next probably 12 months. And then after the midterms, we'll probably see some legal stuff happen on 230, and that will change how the Internet works. Honest to God, 230 is the thing that defines what the Internet is today. Yeah. Um, and and that will change the way the Internet works. Yep. And Forever. It- Either positively or negatively, depending on how it's rewritten. Well, yeah, and I mean, you, you've heard me make the point before, and it's it's an out there concept, but it's out there. You know, FCC was given control of the Internet, so technically anything that goes over any kind of broadband cable, satellite, fiber optic, whatever, is technically in their purview. And all they do is regulate and sell licensing of airwaves and the yeah. use of that. So how long it's before people fairness. like us are considered in fairness under the last administration, they gave that back to Congress. Yes. So as of right and and the current FCC has not tried to reclaim that. So yeah. as of right now, the FCC does not have um, any recognized jurisdiction over the internet. Yeah. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Yes. I 100% agree with net neutrality. My, yeah. The first ever special episode of F5 Live, which was like 
in our first four months was as the net neutrality law expired. Wow. And yeah. I have not changed my position on it since then. I 100% support net neutrality, and I 100% do not support the FCC being the ones in charge of it. Darn tootin'. <laughs> Darn tootin'. Con- Congress has to pass a law, plain yes. and simple. Yes, exactly. The FCC cannot just say, this is what we're doing. A law has to be passed. Congress cannot delegate all of their all of their job away. Otherwise, eliminate yeah. the Congress. Yeah. And yeah. that's not a great idea. You've no. got to have that separation of powers. The executive branch cannot just say, we're implementing law. No, you're not. Sorry. No, you're yeah. not. Yeah, it was, it was some dangerous, dangerous ground to trod. It really was. Yeah. There are nearly 600 people in Congress between the two houses on purpose because it's supposed to be a challenge to get something through. That's right. Because you're supposed to be representing the good of of all of the states. It's supposed to be a challenge. You cannot do anything by executive fiat. So the idea of the FCC being in charge is wrong. If anything, it's the FTC that should be for it. Um, And the former head of the FCC said... It should be the FTC. This isn't yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're doing. All we do is sell and sell and regulate airwaves, man. <laughs> that's all our like. Literally, that's all their charter says. Yeah, that's all yeah. they do. They they regulate communications and and that kind of stuff. Like a lot of audio engineers are mad because they stole quite a chunk of our spectrum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and well, just. Get, it has a button. wireless mics are illegal now. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, and that's just it. Um, you really do have to keep your ear to the ground with technology and with law when it comes to all of it, because the two are so intricately intertwined. Um, yes, that, I, try to, I try to live in that space. I cover yeah. that line so frequently that yeah. I'm invited to conferences now. <laughs> Epic, because they. I have some sort of a legal background, which I don't. I just have a great lawyer who is a great source. He's he's no uh, uh, Bill Richmond, but <laughs> well, and you um, you read you you actively keep up on this stuff. You're one of those people that's like me, man. You read footnotes because uh-huh. they're there for I a don't reason. Keep the source material. I try to understand everything that's coming my way. Yeah, to, yeah. To explain it to. Me. Exactly. And and once again, that's what I love about your show. That's what I love about F5 Live. It's what I love about Plug Hits Live. You guys take these hard, broad scoping concepts and really drill down into the nitty gritty of them and explain it in such a such an easy to understand and digestible way. It's fantastic. So appreciate it. Hey, man, thank you so much for always coming on whenever I call. Uh, I thoroughly love having you on the show talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, before we let you go here, do tell everybody where they can go to keep up with latest episodes, where they can go to check things out, where they can go to listen, watch, subscribe, like, love, swipe right, everything. Absolutely. The easiest way to find all of our shows is by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows. Uh, if you just go to Plug Hits Live, you'll see subscribe on the left. All of our shows are there, F5 Live, The Pilch Point, Plug It's Live Presents, uh, First Looks. Um, we've got nine. I cannot honestly remember all of them. How To and Unboxed yeah. and 3000 Brigade and, oh, something else. Doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> they're all there. There's quick links to get to all the shows. You can do a, follow us on on you know YouTube for as long as they'll let us be there. Um Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, uh, anywhere else. Honestly, we're everywhere. You can find us. Um, but plugitslive.com slash subscribe is the best way to see all of it. There is a, a refresh of the site coming uh, in time for CES this year. Um, yeah. I mean, we've been working with a marketing team. We're doing a big refresh to make it match uh, Windows 11 instead of Windows 10. Ooh, so. Nice. Nice. You know, I had not even taken that into consideration. I hate you so much right now. Um, (laughs) I'm like six episodes away from a (laughs) rebrand. 
website's already built. I hadn't even thought about Windows 11 in that. So, yeah. Now Your I get some redesign work. The UI site is entirely based around uh, Windows 10 uh, pre-Fluent uh, design language. And now with the Fluent 2 design language, we figured it was time. It's not going to be a huge update. I mean, there's going to be a lot of changes, but it's not a huge update. It's the overall structure with the green thing in the top left. They're staying, but the, the icons are all changing out. And we're, okay. It'll be a nice change. <laughs> Great. Great. Well, I look forward to it. I look forward to seeing you hopefully in person this year. Yeah. I'm I'm there. We've For a CES. I can't wait. I can't wait, man. Um it was great covering it digital this last year, but that is a handshake and walk around event. I can't wait to do it with you, buddy. For sure. So hold the line while we let you while we close things out real quick. While you're online checking out everything from Plug Hits Live, please do make sure to stop on by the Dudes and Beer Podcast, dudesandbeer.com. And don't forget our call to action for the next seven weeks until we relaunch. Just Google Curious Realm. Just Google it. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to stop and visit. Uh, Just by doing that, we have already risen to the top of Google, folks. Um, It's been amazing. It's been great. There we are, right there, right behind Facebook. Um, The website is a copy-for-copy page of our website. So stop on by, check it out. Until next time, everybody, remember... If you can't be good, be good at it. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We will talk to y'all soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Dudes and Beer Podcast. To listen to our audio streams or chat with us live, download the official Dudes and Beer app for Android and iDevices, available on Google Play and iTunes markets. For more episodes, content, and information, visit us online at dudesandbeer.com. You can also find our episodes on Breach.tv, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast service. Dudes and Beer is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. For more about our sponsors and other podcasts on this network, visit hcuniversalnetwork.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. And until next time, drink responsibly.